I bought this silly little fold-up bicycle when I was traveling a lot for work, but surprisingly it's become my main bike. It's robust, efficient, and versatile, but best of all, it travels well. Toss it in the back seat or the trunk of a car, take it on the train. The one thing that gives me pause is air travel. Yes, some airlines will accept this type of bike as checked luggage on its own. Some will even let you put it in an overhead bin, but not all. And I can tell you based on my experience with traveling for work, if your luggage is an odd shape or size, whether or not you'll be charged for oversized cargo can often depend as much on the person who's taking the bags as it does on official company policy. And when you commend your prized possessions to baggage handlers, the condition that it will arrive in at the other end of your journey is far from guaranteed. For this reason, I wanted a no-questions-asked way to take my bicycle on a plane. Something that would be sturdy enough to protect my bike, come in under the size standard limits for airlines, and preferably be transportable with the bicycle when you reach the other end. This gives us some pretty intense design constraints. First, What's the biggest bag most airlines will accept without charging an oversized fee? The good news is, it's pretty consistent between airlines around the world. The bad news is, it's a bizarre system of measurement, and one that I don't think any bike in the world actually fits. To accommodate differently shaped bags, and for simplicity I suppose, airlines use the sum of a bag's external dimensions, height, width, and depth, to determine whether it's oversized. The magic number is 158 centimeters, or 62 inches. If height, width, and depth add up to more than that, it's a gamble whether an airline will take it without charging extra. This is a weird system, because a bag that takes up less than a liter of space could be considered oversized, while a bag that's 145 times that volume would be A-OK. -okay. Anyway, it's almost a moot point, because unfortunately my bike won't fit within those dimensions, so I can either invent a box that's bigger on the inside than the outside, or I can take the seat post out for travel. After hundreds of hours of concept art, focus groups, topology and finite element analysis, and supply chain research, I decided on the bold and innovative design choice of a rectangular box made out of stuff I could buy at the hardware store. So, obviously, uh, you can't exactly super glue aluminum together, so uh, I got a TIG welder, but I've heard that this is pretty hard, so I guess we'd better read the instruction manual. Wow, that does sound hard. I made a rectangle. It's uh, definitely going to be a bit of a tight fit, but it uh, looks like everything's contained within the bounds of the, the frame, and uh, it's coming together quite nicely. Not bad for the first week of TIG welding. I've also got two circles. They can mount through those little holes and then it'll act as a bike trailer. I have made a second rectangle. So this one's going to be the bottom, this one's going to be the top, and as you can see the uh, the rim is a lot thinner and is a C-channel and that's because the panels are going to slot into that C-channel and uh, it's it's narrower so that the bike can pass through it without hitting anything. So now we just have to get the corner struts and um, tie these two together. The, uh, the box is kind of coming together. I've got the uh, top rim welded to the, the side struts and now I've just got to zip up the welds on the bottom 
the bottom rim, and uh, it will be a cube. We have a cube, or rectangular prism anyway. So here's uh, the first of the corner bumpers off of the printer. As you can see, it's printed in a very durable, flexible uh, thermoplastic polyurethane. This is a 95 shore, 95A shore hardness, so that should be pretty, um, pretty abrasion resistant, pretty uh, durable, but also do what we need it to, and that's going to go on there just like that. You can see I've got the uh, holes for bolts marked out with Sharpie, and uh, those bumpers should prevent uh, the corners from being damaged. They'll cover up my incredibly ugly welds, which is important, and uh, they'll also um, prevent it from, I don't know, bumping into somebody being a pain in that regard. Got all the panels cut to size and installed. Um, I'm really liking how this is looking. It's, it's looking really clean. I've got all but two of the corner brackets printed. Just got to do this one and that one. And the, the fact that they kind of cover up the inconsistencies in the welds is just bonus points. Um, these corners take about five and a half hours each to print, so... That's been going a little slow, especially because the flexible filament has a higher failure rate when printing. Yeah, let's see how the bike fits. This actually is uh, pretty much perfect. I am a little bit surprised because uh, when I had first finished the frame and tried fitting in the, the bike, I didn't think it would fit that well. I was particularly worried about not having enough clearance up here, but there's a good eighth sixteenth of an inch it's it's kind of ideal because um you don't want there to be a lot of room in there for it to slide around so it's uh, as small as it can physically be i think while still being large enough to hold the whole thing well this project's been on hold for a bit but uh the borders just opened up, and so I'm not wasting any time. I gotta be ready to fly with this thing in about a week. So, putting some handles on it. I'm gonna melt some holes through the uh, polyester webbing and the polycarbonate panels with soldering iron. And uh, that will allow me to put binder posts through the panel. There we go. There's one. There's the other. Perfect. Wow, that smoke is undoubtedly incredibly wholesome. Nothing healthier than melting polycarbonate. We're going to be using uh, not only the binding posts that I've been using, but also some big fat washers. So there's no possibility of this like pulling out or pulling through because all of the weight of the, uh, the bike and the box are gonna be resting on this section of the plastic which I think it'll be, it'll be fine, but better safe than sorry. And the next part that we're dealing with here is going to be the lid. We've got to figure out a way to attach that um, in such a way that you can open it, but also that it's very firmly secured and preferably a way that you can open and close it rather quickly. So believe it or not, I think the way to do that is with zippers. And that way, when it's sewn on each side, you can unzip one side 
and open it like that, or unzip the other side, open it like that, or when it's in trailer mode, you can unzip both and have an open top trailer. Now that we've done some truly horrific crimes with that uh, industrial sewing machine, um, the zippers are in place. I'm going to rivet them down, but uh, first we've got a bit of an issue, which is that like this side in particular, the other side not so much, but this side in particular, if you zip it up, the zipper pull just shoots off the end. Uh, because I had to cut these zippers down a bit, they no longer um, terminate with a little block there. So, what I'm going to do is, the with uh, these YKK zippers, um, the teeth are acetyl, uh, which is usually brand name Delrin. And I don't have any Delrin filament, but I do have ABS filament, and kind of squirt it on in there. I can melt up the Delrin and fill in the gap in between with some hot molten ABS. And that will bond quite nicely and give me a really nice little block of uh, plastic that'll stop that zipper pull from coming off the end. Well, I've got the panels back on. I've got the uh, carrying strap and I'm figuring out the trailer tongue here. So this is a 3D printed um, mount that locks onto the rack with a modified quick release skewer. Skewers uh, cheap titanium for the front wheel of a regular bike so that it doesn't uh, doesn't rust. We've got a heim joint here that'll allow for some pivoting and wiggle room on the hitch, and that's a, that's a stainless steel heim joint, and that's threaded into a brass thermoset insert M6 size, which uh, perfectly like press fit into the end of this tube and it's not coming out. A bicycle. Bicycle. Yep. Got it was waiting for me when I got here. <sighs> All right. It only took like five hours to get through customs. Well, oh, that's the phone ringing. Uh, quarantine's over. I feel like it's worth a bit of context at this point. My wife moved to Japan for work in 2019. I was hoping to join her soon after, but then the pandemic hit. I finally managed to get a visa the day they closed the borders again for Omicron. I got my second visa, and the result is what you're seeing now. 
When I've lived outside my home country in the past, the whole dance of getting a bike when you've moved, dealing with the inevitable problems of a cheap bike and getting rid of it when you left, were just a complete pain. Being able to bring an excellent bike with me and start using it for cargo literally from the instant I got here to get my luggage to my new home is a hundred times better. I look forward to having this bike along for the journey wherever we end up for years to come.